Good morning, everyone. Today is April 17th, 2021. We are going to chant Sambujo this morning. Sambujo will appear on the screen, so please keep watching the screen. Please join me in Gashio. Please put your palms together. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namanda Butz. Namanda Butz. Namanda Butz. Namanda Pujo
ナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマンダーブツナマン疑心の善人なるゆえに、方便けどに止まるなりと。Those who practice the root of good while believing deeply in the recompense of good and evil are good people whose minds are possessed of doubt. Hence, they remain in the provisional transformed land. ナモアミーダブツ。ナモアミーダブツ。ナモアミーダブツ。ナマンダブツ。ナマンダブツ。ナマンダブツ。ナマンダブツ。So the first two lines of today's wasan comes from the Raja Sutra. And Shinran Shogun quotes twice in chapter on transformed Buddha and land, where Shinran Shogun discusses the 19th and the 20th vow. So this first two line of today's wasan is talking about the self-power practitioners. And Shinran Shogun describes these people are good people whose minds are possessed of doubt. They practice the root of good and recite Nembutsu thinking that me, I, reciting Nembutsu will be the cause of my birth into the pure one. The 18th vow, the primal vow is the vow to save all beings of the 10 directions. But at the end of the 18th vow, it's said that excluded are those who commit the five grave offenses and slander the Dharma. And there are two ways to understand what the five grave offenses are. So let's see the glossary of collected works of Shinna. And it said, in teaching practice and realization, Shinna sets forth two traditions. Hinayana and Mahayana, concerning the five gate offenses, five grave offenses, acts deemed so evil as to condemn one irrevocably uh, to hell. The Hinayana tradition lists them as killing one's mother, killing one's father, killing an arhat, causing blood to flow from the body of a Buddha, disrupting the harmony of the assembly of monks. The Mahayana traditions give them as destroying stupas and temples, burning, burning sutras and Buddhist images, while plundering the three, three treasures, causing others to do these acts while being pleased at seeing them done, slandering the disciples, solitary Buddhas, or the Mahayana teachings, harassing the practice of a monk or causing his death. Committing any of the five grave offenses of the early tradition. Committing the ten transgressions with the conviction that there will be no karmic recompense and without fear for the next life, while teaching others such an attitude. So, you know, we don't use the term Hinayana anymore because this is a discriminatory term used from Mahayana perspective. Looking down the practitioners who only seek for the awakening of the self. So, you know, it's interesting that Buddhist longing, abandoning self conceit or arrogance, still attached to the self conceit and arrogantly called people who practice for the self awakening with discriminatory words. You know, it's just like Iron Fist on Netflix. You know, this is the story about a man who practiced at the Buddhist temple and succeeded the Iron Fist, but he's always angry. You know, when I watch the show, I always feel like, what did you learn at the temple? You know, but anyway, now you don't, we don't, we don't use the term Hinayana anymore and we use Theravada. And traditionally, we are taught that not physically killing someone, but mentally thinking about killing someone is also 
committing the killing. And when we see Mahayana vis uh, version of five grave offenses, it said committing the 10 transgression. And 10 transgression includes telling lies, engaging idle talks, using harsh words, also greed, anger, and wrong view is included in this 10 transgression. So thinking about this, those who commit the five grave offenses, literary means every person. I have encountered no one who have ever told lies or got angry or did not see things with wrong views. So Shinran Shogun's understanding of the word excluded is to let us know how heavy the karma of committing these offenses are and restraint from committing them. And those who have committed these offenses, that means every people, receive the heart of Buddha to save all beings in the primal vow and trust themselves to the working. Then all beings attain birth. So the main target of the primal vow is this being, the person who have committed the five grave offenses. So Shinran Shogun uses the term akunin, often translated as evil person. And the evil person is a person who realizes how heavy the karmic evil of the self are and entrust themselves to the working of the primal vow. So those who rely on the self-power, if they turn their mind and begin to entrust themselves to the working of the primal vow, they will attain birth in fulfilled land. But those who doubt the working and rely on the power of the self will attain birth in transformed Buddha land. And Shinan Shogun's understanding of good person and evil person is little different from the ordinary understanding. So, you know, we cannot abandon the self-centered understanding. And even though we know how heavy the karma of offending the five grave offenses are, we are keep offending them. So this self is not reliable at all. That is why we should rely on Buddha. We should rely on Buddha's guidance. And we should rethink our daily actions through hearing the vow of Amira Buddha to save us. So it was a little bit longer than usual, but I hope uh, today's explanation helped. And in closing, please join me in Gashio. Please put your palms together. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namanda Butz. Namanda Butz. Namanda Butz. So this will conclude today's morning service, and I hope you will have a great day today, and I hope to see you tomorrow morning. So thank you for attending today's service.